Many blindsided by all of this and looking for some compassion as Congress finalizes that $2 trillion economic stimulus plan. They are racing to get much needed cash to businesses that employ fewer than 500 workers. America's 30 million small businesses, those catering shops, web design firms, bookstores, and yes, even comedy clubs. As Devin Dwyer discovered, the coronavirus crisis is taking a toll even on those whose primary purpose is to make us laugh. Stand-up comedy has gone silent in the nation's capital. It's not funny, you know, that needs to be clear. Fully the pandemic, no joke for small business owners um, like Allison Jaffe, cool. who's been helping people laugh off their stress at her DC Improv Club for nearly 20 years. It's also not um, healthy to just be in total fear and panic. You know, that's gonna do more damage to you. Yeah. That's it. The virus is going to hurt you, but that feeling is going to hurt you, too. After novel coronavirus hit, she canceled upcoming acts, refunded tickets, and laid off all 50 of her employees, including her husband. He knew it was coming, um, but I, I just, you know, said it. And he said, well, this is the first time I got laid this month. So <laughs> there you go. That's what happens when you work in a comedy club and marry a comedian. Uh, they have that kind of which was funny, so I was sad, and then I laughed, and then I was like, all right, we'll get through it. It's been a nightmare. It's been, I, I just, the word that I keep telling and saying is horrific. Many American small business owners say they're very worried about survival. Experts believe alleviating those fears is critical to stabilizing the U.S. economy now in free fall. This crisis is one of the worst things I've ever seen for small business. Karen Mills led the U.S. Small Business Administration through the Great Recession and recovery. It actually far exceeds the problems that we had in 2009. And that's because half the people who work in this country own or work for a small business. So, so that's half our jobs. And they have very low cash buffers. On average, they have about 26 days of cash. So this is really a this is really a race to survive. It is absolutely because when you run out of cash as a small business, you're dead. The cash crunch worries Adam Waterus, a used bookstore owner in D.C. He just completed a major renovation of his shop and has little savings on reserve. Having people stop coming to the space is necessary for health, health and safety, but. It just dramatically stop. How dramatically has the business dropped off? 30%, 50%? Um, I think closer to, probably closer to 75%. Waterus laid off four employees this month and is doing all he can to keep three others on payroll. He's nervous about taking on more debt with new loans, but says that new stimulus plan might help. It seems like that might be happening, which I think is important, that they're giving certain provisions to small businesses. Congress is expected to send more than $350 billion in emergency loans to small business owners, and with a major perk. They won't have to pay back the government. They use the money to pay rent or their workers. I would take that deal any day um, uh, to allow us to, to do that if, if those loans could, could therefore be forgiven. Pia Carasone owns one of the only women-owned distilleries in the world. She makes her craft vodka and bourbon in the shadow of the U.S. Capitol, where she used to work as chief of staff to then-Congresswoman Gabby Giffords. Crisis management has been my life calling. Um, and, you know, staying calm is certainly an important factor. Um, figuring out how to find moments of clarity in otherwise very chaotic. But the question is, do small spirit producers like us survive? And, you know, remains to be seen. For now, survival means making hand sanitizer. As a distillery, we're uniquely positioned to have on hand the uh, one of the main ingredients in making hand cleaner. Parasone's distillery churning out small bottles of homemade gel, filling a 1,000 gallon order just this week from the DC government for police and EMS. People are gonna flow freely and reinfect each other and spread the virus. So I, I, I as a small business owner who is suffering would be very, very glad to uh, make sure that we continue to shut down um, until we kill this thing. The White House and some economists are pushing to lift the business shutdown as soon as possible. President Trump setting a goal of Easter, April 12th, weeks ahead of what many public health experts say may be safe. Would you support that? I would say no. Like, it's not safe. I don't want, that's not 
I think, responsible for me as a business owner. I don't know that Trump's going to know that. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I would rather hear from I'd rather hear from DC. I'd rather hear from Mayor Bowser and and other DC health officials than I would uh, him. Are you looking at this panicked that you're going to have to shut for good? So. I am trying to stay very positive. I believe in the power of comedy. It's depressing to see it totally empty, but I know that we will not always be this. That spirit of determination combined with a financial boost from government, a cause for cautious optimism that despite a financial body blow from the virus, small businesses can survive and continue to thrive. I know we'll be filled with people again that want to be here, that want to laugh, that need a laugh. And um, I look forward to that day. Me too. And hopefully sooner than later. Me yes. too. For ABC News Live, I'm Devin Dwyer in Washington. Yes, we could all certainly use a good laugh. Our thanks to Devin. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.